2482. Oh, yeah, 2482, I was going to say. It's a little bit higher yeah. than uh, the old 1700. <laughs> that sounds like my MMR back in Season 2. Well, <laughs> I like hope that. he doesn't play PvE like he played last game. I'll, yeah. I'll say that much. Yeah. But nope, it's going to be the Nico top lane, and there is the answer that Kuzan wants to go towards against Faker's Zoe in the mid lane. So we're keeping the Lux for the laning phase. Lux Ezreal, very strong in the laning phase, of course. And uh, Gen.G are going to have the most frustrating comp to deal with ever. However, if they get maybe jumped, you were, maybe, you were thinking about like maybe punch? it's one last punch, is that's a really, really nice oh, trouble bubble, nice. but he's still going to get the flash. Out of Faker, and he's still going to go down for First Blood. Halo Blades, Rek'Sai, plenty of damage availability. And Kuzan being able to keep his Flash available. I really like really the percentage play. Too yeah. much action to occur on the map. Now, Effort is taking a trip to the river, but ends up getting caught. Yeah, he was trying to go back home, but Songwon finds him. Does have the Grey Health. They hold on to a lot of their damage until after that one goes down, but Effort eventually... Able to get out of there, doesn't even have to flash as there's the impale. Teddy's gonna find the piercing arrow. Hail of arrows, not enough. And Ruler is able to flash to get himself out. That wow. Was really, really close. Super so close. See how SKT cloud, yeah. goes with uh, rolling a little bit lower. As Faker sidestepping absolutely everything oh. and almost kills Kuzan. That was amazing from our man in the mid lane. His performance on the Akali in game one was brilliant. Uh, really good to see Faker in some form here over well, Democracy. Do we kingdom. have Democracy on the bottom side of the map? Is that when like, what is a everyone democracy? gets, I don't know. What, oh, what no, certainly not there. this. Yeah, this ain't a Democracy. This is, oh my goodness, a turnaround. Really nicely done actually, one for one so far. Oh! Trouble bubble from downtown. And Glid doesn't have to use the ult for that one. Double kill comes in for Teddy. And SKT are going to do it. It's surprising because now it means that his recall timer will be a little bit mismatched. Perhaps what he's thinking here is that he doesn't want to give up priority in mid. Well, there's the Abyssal Voyage. Effort's going to come in with clear. No QSS available just yet for Ruler, and he is well dead. Teddy picks up his third of the game. He's the man with the bounty on his head, and he's the man that SKT like to get behind. Really, really nice play for the early game on SKT's side. Yeah, and the Varus is just Lord accelerating. Also, just going to walk up and smite. That's not too bad. It's Khan. He's going to get pulled back. Pop Blossom comes in. Khan does have the flash available easily. Picks that one up. The World Ender not even necessary, apart from some extra movement speed. And that was just some really nice play out of Khan. Yeah, that was absolutely fantastic out of him. 4,000 gold going to be the lead here for SKT. Songwon and Kuzan, they really have an issue with Faker here, but he drops off his bubble. That was really cute. Not going to be enough, though. Teleports oh, are coming in. That's as, a donation. Yep. The Pop Blossom comes in, but actually, Khan in the World Ender. He's turn. able to dive on top of Cube. Shape Splitter was the wrong one. The flash forward ruler able to utilize the QSS that he literally just purchased in order to get out of the Impale. Really good turnaround there. And look, I thought it was a donation as well, but Khan using the stopwatch to great effect. And comes at the cost of his stopwatch. They managed to avoid what could have been a really big tempo turnaround swing. Oh, God. Uh, Kuzan going to have to flash double distortion in order to get out of the way of Khan. Khan's Aatrox, absolutely terrifying right now. And oh. uh, Teddy just kills a Rek'Sai at the back of the Baron Pit. Not entirely sure what he was doing there. I was checking out top lane. Oh, as now Rule is getting corralled as well. He's trying to turn it into a kill onto Teddy. But he's getting body blocked. Oh, oh the final spark picks off Teddy. And that means that SKT probably can't turn on a Baron. Yeah, SK That's actually Telecom huge. Can't start the Baron now. However... Teddy has teleport, Ruler does not. Okay. That is something. I was uh, talking to some of the SKT staff, just saying that uh, the uh -oh. opinion of the players has certainly gotten better as Pop Blossom here from Cube. He doesn't even get it off, though. Just explodes at the hands of Khan. Khan pretty good at that this game. As uh, SKT will move over to the inhibitor on the bottom side of the map. They know that they've got Gen G routed. They will have spare time. They should be able to lock this one down. A lot of damage availability. Final Spark might actually be the last one for this game. They're going to get the bottom inhibitor, and it looks like they're keen on retreating. As SK Telecom, they're the Dragon Slayers this game. Oh, Force scenario, depending on what they're going for. Teddy throws down a control ward. He's looking for Song One. Has cleared. He's found a target, and they are dead. That is just yeah. how that's going to go. Teddy easily locks down Kuzan. 
And the fact that anyone dies in one CC duration of the Impale means that if you don't have a QSS or one available, you're dead. Yeah. And at this point of the game, it doesn't even seem like SK Telecom care that much about waiting for the Infernal and playing Captain Careful game. As that's going to be the top inhibitor. To, well, that's a lot of damage that he took from the turret shop. But with the Bloodthirster and Blade of the Ruined King. I think this is fantastic, though, because in game number one, SKT, all they were thinking about was we can't do anything without, without a Baron because of their composition. Now, they're using a comp that loves sieging despite the Baron, because if Genji fights them around the Baron, that could be Genji's only opportunity to get back in as Khan does find the knockoff on the Song One. Yeah, they're able to take all of these yeah. inhibitors right in front of Genji, and they can't actually do anything about it. Yeah, Genji can't actually contest. We, we almost have Impale up again, and SKT just get to click their fingers and kill someone. That is what this comp does if you don't have QSS on every member of your team. Oh, they really want to end right now. I mean, why the heck not? I mean, 30 minutes just ticked over. They've got half the health bar on one Nexus. Impale Tarot. is about to be up. Yep, there it is. And this now is Clid, Clid can defense. decide. This is turret defense on the hardest difficulty when you don't have very much experience with the game. That is... Uh, how this one feels, starting to get overwhelming. There it is! Impale came in, the Nico is going to leave. That redemption is certainly not going to exist, and the Nexus is just going to get obliterated. SKT decide to end the game, and then it ends. Just like that, huh? Yeah. Is that what happened? That's what happened. All right. They felt like playing some League of Legends. Towards the end there, I think Teddy said, I'm feeling peckish, guys, and they said, oh! Oh, goodness. Sorry, Teddy. Yeah. We'll win the game. This is SKT. Two, two zeros in a row. Four game wins. When do we start talking about a streak, LS? Maybe four. Five yeah, games. I think maybe give it another week. <laughs> Let's give it another week. <laughs> Don't get too excited. Yeah. Yeah. Well, an effort coming in here today. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, effort played in game number two. Of course, game number one was... Uh,